So um, the, this is part of Metastub, but it's a slightly different part of it. Uh, why right now? And um, it's the way that I want to view it is as a way of managing intelligent cities or how cities can become more intelligent. And intelligence in this context, con context means uh, the city knows and has the information uh, about all the important aspects of its functioning and, uh, and, and health and, and, and risk situations. So the issue that we have at hand here is how to get a picture of the health of the entire population of a city and also how to get it frequently. And actually sampling is a good technique and will give lots of results, but sampling is not enough because all of a sudden we have an epidemic that affects at first five people. We want to have this five people, then it affects 10. We're not gonna get it with a sample, right? We need, we need something different. And we can think of you know, testing everybody, but cities are big, you know, they have millions of people. So we quickly see that all the traditional methods of sampling people do not work. And so I want to set up uh, the, what we are doing in this scenario, the scenario of, a, of an intelligent city that wants to know the health of its population in, in quite a bit of depth so that we can prevent problems that may happen in very localized places. And so we have three projects, Metasub, does the subway stations, because this is a way that a lot of the population, a very large percentage of the population, travels through the subway every day. And they touch things and, 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 and turnstiles and, and screens and so on, and they leave all their microbes there. We sample the sewage also, that's another way. Well, here is the sampling of New York that was already mentioned, uh, the sewage, it's a fantastic way of collecting samples of everybody. You know, you all go to the toilet at some point, <laughs> and, and, and that goes into a central place. And actually, the treating plants are fantastic mechanisms of making an average of the entire population, right? But an average that has everything, and microbes are very small, and so even something that appears one in a million, we can still detect it in, this, in, in, in the sewage at the end. And the beaches are also a place, depending on the country and so on, uh, that is another place where we could collect data from the entire population because they get in the water and they get washed up and all the bacteria get into the water. So what is metagenomics? Just a, just a very simple explanation of what it is. Um, it's a way, a technique, of getting a sample and getting all the DNA that is in that sample in one really one experiment, which is by, by now it's not very expensive. And I'm talking about tens of millions of reads, which mean tens of millions, did I do something? Oh, okay, oh yes. Uh, so sorry. Yeah. So it's a, it's a way of, uh, of reading uh, tens of millions of fragments of DNA in one single experiment. And, uh, and so there, is, there are several aspects that make this very important. Not only the fact that we can read a lot, not only the fact that we can read every single species that, that lives there, but also some bacteria live with other bacteria in symbiosis, and it's very difficult to get at them in the traditional ways, because you, you get them where they are, if you try to isolate them, they, they die. So, so metagenomics has opened a field completely in, 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 this, in, 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 in looking at a, at a sample uh, in a population. So there is a, there is, this is a lab technique. I'm not gonna go into the details, it's just uh, there are two types of metagenomics, uh, one that is useful to identify species, the one that is on top, and the bottom part is called the shotgun, 
where the, the shotgun is the most interesting one for us, where we read everything. So, is that the right one that I have? <laughs> so I'm losing the screens one by one. <laughs> yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> here it's back. So at least I can see one. So using the sewage samples is, uh, is something that has been done for quite some time. Uh, we proposed this in 2012. It has been appearing more and more in the literature in recent times. And it, it's sort of the obvious thing that I have said before. We all uh, eventually go to the washroom at some point in the day. And, and we leave our samples. The, the sewage has more than that, right? The sewage has also the kitchen and other things, which complicates matters, but those are technicalities. In the end, we have a good way of collecting all the samples from the sewage. Uh, <clears throat> the city in question is Montevideo. It's the capital of Uruguay. It's about a two million metropolitan area, two million people metropolitan area. Uh, it has 20 kilometers of, of, sea, of beaches. These are river beaches. Uh, the, a very nice property of Montevideo is that 90% of the dwellings, 90% of the people basically um, ha are connected to the official sewage system, to the municipal sewage system. Uh, the, the, this is not perfect like in, in many places. In particular, and the interest actually of looking at the beaches, comes from the fact that when there is a heavy rain, uh, the sewage pipes uh, sort of are, are not totally independent, and, and then uh, sort of rainwater may get mixed with sewage water. And that's why it's interesting also to monitor the beaches. We took samples of the city. We took samples of the uh, beaches and we took samples of the sewage places where they are collected. And <clears throat> here comes sort of the, one of the important aspects that I think it's um, very uh, pertinent to this audience. How can we make this useful for the city? Now, from the research point of view, we have millions of, of, of interesting problems that we can solve here. Uh, but those are not going to be the ones that are going to interest the city. So we have concentrated on three problems, on three applications, if you wish. Uh, antimicrobial resistance, antibiotic resistance that was already mentioned, an epidemic's early warning, and beach certification. That's why. Well, why will the city listen to us? We had the, the luck, in some sense, of talking to a very intelligent person that was very high up in the city that told us things in extremely simple terms. He says, the city is going to listen to your project if it does one of these three things. And actually, in this order, if the project will save money, then we will hear, we will listen. If it gives <clears throat> a tangible improvement for the citizens, for example, the citizens get something out of it. They get a warning or they get sort of, you know, public, better tr public transport or something like that. Something that the citizen can say, my life is better in the city, then we will listen. And finally, <clears throat> a distant third is the city wants to call itself an intelligent city. So if it's something that goes in the direction of intelligent city, then we will listen to it. If it doesn't fall into these categories, don't bother. We are not going to listen. And I think this is very important. We have to uh, merge our scientific interests with the city interests. And those three projects have achieved that. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about antimicrobial resistance, AMR. Uh, great. We have it back here, <clears throat> which is uh, what was called originally uh, anti, uh, <clears throat> antibiotic resistance, and 
just without trying to offend you, I'm going to describe it what it is. Uh, we have lots of germs. Uh, some of the germs have a bit of a resistance to antibiotics. We apply an antibiotic. The antibiotic kills all the bacteria. Usually they kill, antibiotics have a very wide range. They kill everything. But if they don't kill some of the bacteria, these bacteria now are winners. And they will reproduce without competition because all the other bacteria are dead. And so in doing so, we are actually filtering for the best bacteria that fight that antibiotic. And so the, the best bacteria that can live with that antibiotic. And so that's the way that we create superbugs. And a patient that is given an antibiotic for which there is AMR is likely to end up in hospital. Actually, a colleague, a doctor colleague of mine said that's very gentle. They probably end up in the morgue quite often. So it has a huge cost for society because there is hospital days, there is loss of work, there is even loss of life. And when we start using antibiotics, when there is resistance, the damage is to the patients, but also the damage is that we are creating a more powerful bug. You know, we are creating a, we are selecting the, the bacteria that best cope with this antibiotic. So that's why doctors are so resistant to use antibiotics when it's, they are not needed. Well, the health organization thinks it's one of the three major public health. Uh, they project 10 million deaths uh, by the year 2050. It's very serious. And here's, do I have a laser? No. <clears throat> Here is the main sort of type of results that we are going to obtain. Horizontally, we have the places that we have sampled. Uh, the top ones are basically, sorry, the second tier are the sewage ones, the blue ones are the beaches. Vertically, we have the types of antibiotic resistance. There are many types of antibiotic resistance. There's more than 20 types of resistance. A dot, a block there, means that in that place we found that resistance. So that's very simple picture now shows us something. There is two types of resistance that appear everywhere in Montevideo. So what's the message to the doctors? Please don't use those antibiotics. You know, they, there is resistance everywhere. Use any of the others that have a lot less resistance and hence, you're not going to worsen the problem, and you're going to get your, your patients healthy again. So, okay, there's lots of technicalities. What appears where? We can, we can be infinitely more precise in identifying the types of resistance that are on the right with the places that we are finding the type of resistance. When we want to study a particular type of resistance, uh, we have all the information to go into databases, into publications, and understand what is the real problem. But I think that, I think that the important picture for the city is this one. Which are the vertical bars that appear too dense? Tell your doctors, don't use these antibiotics for some time until the picture changes. So um, this is one of the projects uh, that we have also this uh, prevention of or prediction of epidemics and the beaches. Uh, the city of Montevideo has signed on on these two projects. We are also looking at highly polluted creeks with this technique. Uh, we have a paper mill that wants to install itself in Uruguay, and they want to do the study before and after so that they are not blamed for something that they don't do. And we have a very interesting problem with hospitals in the city. Sadly enough, hospitals are normally connected to the normal sewage. And so the bugs, that are, the very serious bugs that are collected in hospitals normally end up going to the sewage, and in extreme cases, they may end up going to the beaches. 
And of course, we have dozens of excellent research topics, but the excellent research topics are for us. As I said before, we have to merge the interests of the city and our research topics, and that's a very good marriage. So this is part of the team that works on this. Thank you very much.